The problem with exercising the law of the Lord relative to homosexuality in today's church is the fact that imposing the death penalty outside the laws of the land would bring a swift and wrathful response from the pertinent national government. A national government like the United States would not tolerate an independent government with its own laws and judicial system within its territory. We have seen this play out before in Ohio, Missouri, Illinois, and Utah. Yet, the Lord insists that it is His law that the church must follow. When introducing the revelation known as the law of the church, He made clear His expectations. This revelation includes the death penalty for murder. The Lord was fully aware at the time that giving a commandment to the church to apply capital punishment was inconsistent with U.S. constitutional law. Still, he expected the church to act independently from the national law of the United States and every other nation of the world. While it is true that Joseph Smith wrote in the Wentworth letter, now canonized in the Articles of Faith, that the saints are to be subject to the earthly powers, it is a truism that it is impossible to serve God and man simultaneously. Elder Christofferson explains that the new policy was prompted by the recent ruling of the United States Supreme Court effectively legalizing same-sex marriage. The church felt it had to make a distinction between what is legal in the United States and the law of the church and the law of the Lord. We recognize that uh, same-sex marriages are now legal in the United States and some other countries, and that people have the right if they choose to enter into those, and we understand that. With the Supreme Court's decision in the United States, there was a need for a distinction to be made between what may be legal and what may be the law of the church and the law of the Lord, and how we respond to that. Elder Christofferson's explanation of the reasoning of the brethren on this matter makes it clear that the brethren do not understand the law of the Lord or how his kingdom is supposed to operate. First of all, and most importantly, what the U.S. Supreme Court decides on any issue is irrelevant to the law of the Lord. The United States has its own law, while the kingdom of God on the earth has its separate and independent set of laws. No nation of the world can dictate law to the kingdom of God on earth, nor does any man-made legal institution such as the Supreme Court take precedence over the lawgiver Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ presides over this earth, for it is His. Second, there is no lack of clarity or need for a distinction between the laws of men, in this case the Supreme Court, and the law of the Lord. The law of the United States not only allows same-gender sexual relations, it now codifies these relations in a legal institution called same-sex marriage. The law of the Lord calls these relations an abomination and demands the death penalty for those who engage in them. The distinction between the two sets of law could not be more manifest. 
The problem is not the distinction between man's law and the Lord's law, but the subservience of the church to man's law and its moral gymnastics in an effort to find an acceptable middle ground. The church does not need to respond to the decision of the Supreme Court, as Elder Christofferson suggests. It needs to stand independent, for the nations of the world to the head of the church are but vanities.